security professionals are often tasked with reviewing log files. But these files may have thousands of entries, so it can be helpful to automate this process. And that's where Python comes in. Let's start by importing a simple text file that just contains a few words and then storing it as a string in Python. All we need is the text file, its location, and the right Python keywords. We're going to start by typing a with statement. The keyword with handles errors and manages external resources. When using with, Python knows to automatically release resources that would otherwise keep our system busy until the program finishes running. It's often used in file handling to automatically close a file after reading it. To open files and then read them, we write a statement that begins with the keyword with. Then we use the open function. Open is a function that opens a file in Python. The first parameter is the name of the text file on your computer or a link to it on the internet. Depending on the Python environment, you might also need to include a path to this file. Remember to include the .txt extension in the file name. Now, let's discuss the second parameter. This parameter in the open function tells Python what we want to do with the file. In our case, we want to read a file, so we use the letter R between quotation marks. If we wanted to write to a file, we would replace this R with a W, but here we're focusing on reading. Finally, file is a variable that contains the file information as long as we're inside the with statement. Like with other types of statements, we end our with statement with a colon. The code that comes after the colon will tell Python what to do with the content of the file. Let's go into Python and use what we learned. We're ready to open a text file in Python. Now, we'll type our with statement. Next, we'll use Python's built-in read method. The read method converts files into strings. Now, let's go back to our with statement. Similar to a for loop, with statements start an indent on the next line. This tells Python that this code is happening inside the with statement. Inside of the statement, we're going to use the read function to turn our file into a string and store that inside a new variable. This new variable can be used outside of the with statement. So let's exit the with statement by removing the indentation and print the variable. Perfect. The string from the text prints out. Now that you know how to import text files into Python, we're going to take this one step further and learn how to give them a structure. This will allow us to analyze them more easily. This process is often referred to as parsing. Parsing is the process of converting data into a more readable format. To do this, we're going to put together everything we learn about lists and strings and learn another method for working with strings in Python. The method we need is the split method. The split method converts a string into a list. It does this by separating the string based on a specified character. Or if no argument is passed, every time it encounters a white space, it separates the string. So a split would convert the string we are learning about parsing into this list. We are using the split method to separate the strings into smaller chunks that we can analyze more easily 
than one big block of text. In this video, we'll work with an example of a security log where every line represents a new data point. Store these points in a list, we want to separate the text based on the new line. Python considers a new line to be a type of white space. So we can use the split method without passing an argument. We'll start with our code from the previous video. Remember we use this code to open a file and then read it into a string. Now, let's split that string into a list using the split method and then print the output. After we run it, Python outputs a list of usernames instead of one big string of them. If we want to save this list, we would need to assign it to another variable. For example, we can call the variable usernames, and then we run it again. And now this list can be reused in other code. Congratulations, you just learned the basics of parsing a text file in Python. We're now going to bring all of the pieces together to import a file, parse it, and implement a simple algorithm to help us detect suspicious login attempts. In this video, we want to create a program that runs every time a new user logs in and checks if that user has had three or more failed login attempts. First, let's discuss the structure of our inputs to build a strategy to develop our program. We have a log file stored in a TXT format that contains one username per line. Each username represents a failed login attempt. So when a user logs in, we want our program to check for their username and count how many times that username is in our log file. If that username is repeated three or more times, the program returns an alert. We'll start with code that imports the file of login attempts, splits it, and it stores it into a variable named usernames. Let's try printing the variable usernames to check for its contents. We'll run this. Perfect, this is exactly what we expected. The variable usernames is ready to be used in our algorithm. Now, let's develop a strategy for counting username occurrences in a list. We'll start with the first eight elements of the usernames list. We notice that there are two occurrences of the username ERAAB in the list. But how would we tell Python to count this? We'll implement a for loop that iterates through every element. Let's represent the loop variable with an arrow. We also define a counter variable that starts at zero. So our for loop starts at the username E-L-A-R-S-O-N. At every element, Python asks, is this element equal to the string E-R-A-A-B? If the answer is yes, the counter goes up by one. If it isn't, then the counter stays the same. Since E-L-A-R-S-O-N is not the same as E-R-A-A-B, the counter remains zero. Then we move on to the next element. We encounter our first occurrence of ERAAB. At this point, the counter increases by one. As we move to the next element, we find another occurrence of ERAAB. So we increase our counter by one again. That means that our counter is now at two. We would continue this process for the rest of the list. Now that we know the solution, let's talk about how to implement it in Python. Solving the problem in Python will involve a for loop, a counter variable, and an if statement. Let's get back into our code. We'll create a function that counts a user's failed login attempts. First, let's define our function. We'll call it login check. It takes two parameters. The first is called 
Login list. These will be used for the list of failed login attempts. The second is called current user. These will be used for the user who logs in. Inside of this function, we start by defining the counter variable and set its value to zero. Now, we start the for loop. We'll use i as our loop variable and iterate through the login list. In other words, as the loop iterates, it would run through all the failed login attempts in the list. Directly inside of the for loop, we start the if statement. The if statement checks if our loop variable is equal to the current user we're searching for. If this condition is true, we want to add one to the counter. We're almost done with our algorithm. Now, we just need the final if else statement to print the alert. If the counter adds up to three or more, we need to tell the user that their account is locked, so they can't log in. We'll also type an else statement for users who can log in. Our algorithm is complete. Let's try out our new function on an example username. We can pull out a few of the usernames in the list and try our function on them. Let's use the first name in the list. Let's run the code. According to our code, this user can log in. They have fewer than three failed login attempts. Now, let's go back to our user ERAAB. Remember, they had two entries in the list of the first eight names in our failed login attempts. Do you think they'll be able to log in? When we run, we get an account locked message. This means they had three or more failed login attempts. Excellent work. You just developed your first security algorithm involving a log. As you grow in your skills, you learn how to make this algorithm more efficient. But this solution works well for now. 